Okay, so uh, I just checked uh, on the um, on the Didactica website, uh, and there should be something like uh, 20 people who are uh, enrolled for this last exam. Um, so we can expect uh, well, there's still time to enroll, but uh, uh, for some, some days, five or six days, but uh, uh, we should expect uh, uh, at least to have uh, some sort of a quick uh, correction and uh, and uh, say a closing of the exam, including the, the oral tests uh, uh, that could be done in a in a short time. Okay, because we are not uh, we don't have a big number, large such a large number of, of people. Okay, uh, concerning to uh, the the text that we propose for this session, um, it's a configurator type of, of application. So it quite like as a philosophy, it's uh, similar to the first uh, exam, to the exam number one, where we had to configure the car rental and here. We have to configure some pizza purchase. And uh, coming to your questions, Let's start from the question that we have on Slack, and then if we have more, we can add them. Uh, where are they? Here. Okay, so there was one long question that actually uh, the, the interesting part is here uh, about uh, um, how real time should it really be? Okay, so uh, we have the user that is, to, uh, is constantly check, uh, changing the ingredients, the toppings, and the number of pizzas, and so on. Um, but at the same time, it may happen that some uh, pizza types or sizes disappear from um, from the back end uh, because other users are also uh, trying to buy them. Uh, and so uh, the question was to asking for a clarification of how, how often should uh, we check the backend to know how many pizzas for every type we have. And uh, I, if I pick the text, uh, just to, to, to answer that uh, the question, we say that, uh, um, okay, must be the real time, uh, the, the check, okay, must be done whenever new, when new pizzas are requested, okay? So only when you actually request the pizza, mm -hmm. uh, you need to make this check. So it's possible hmm, that you are composing an order uh, that asks for some pizza which are not really available. And only uh, when you click and you see this here, uh, when the user submits, uh, the shop checks that enough pizza are still available and confirms the order. Okay, so uh, the real check uh, that you need to do is uh, when you, you submit the order. So you can fill the order uh, and uh, you, you, it's not required to recompute or recheck this number every time you change an ingredient and so on. Okay, uh, just be aware that if we had to make it really in, 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 in real, real time, let's say, even if I'm not changing anything on my screen, it may happen that some pizza disappears because other users are, are asking for it, okay? So even, even checking every time you change something is not enough because the availability could change even if I'm not changing, okay? Uh, this kind of uh, server push information is not, uh, uh, we, we didn't study that uh, in the course, so we are not asking for you to implement that kind of mechanism. So uh, you, the, the kind of real time that we ask is here is, is also focused, concentrated when uh, when the, the order is uh, concluded and is uh, uh, sent to the um, to the server. And uh, in that case, uh, the user you see that is sent back to the configurator, uh, which must uh, allow to correct the order just sent. So it's a sort of a validation that is done with the complicity of the server side okay you can validate the form in the in the client side but when you click on submit you also ask the server whether the form can be considered valid also take into account the availability okay so uh, to answer the question uh, uh, the second option is good so uh, if, I, if i can write the answer 
is uh, it's uh, that uh, um, the check of the available pizza available pizzas should only be done when the user concludes the order and then checking uh, at at uh, page lot time is also a good idea even if uh, not strictly required as you mentioned here uh, when the page is loading uh, you could avoid it because not explicitly required, but it would be a, a good idea because it's also, also easy to, to check because you have to load a, a lot of other information and it can, uh, can also uh, allow you to set, uh, let's say, to set upper limits uh, all over the number of pizzas. But the real, real check is at the, uh, when, when you conclude the order at the end, okay? So as always, most of the questions uh, solve in the direction of making it uh, easier or simpler okay then we have a second question which is actually uh, the two questions uh, in, a, in one is uh, when we should when should we check the availability of the three sides of pizzas uh, i don't i'm not really sure because it's talking about the uh, not authenticated user so let's check the text and uh, can freely browse the availability here of the three sizes of pizza. Uh, so you are checking the availability in the moment when you are browsing that page. Okay, so uh, the uh, generic user opens the, we, before login, uh, there, there will be one web page with uh, uh, information about the pizzas. When you load that web page, you should load it with the current availability of the different pizzas. You don't need to keep this page constantly updated because it's just an, just an informational page. So a page with the information about the topics and the sizes and the availability. And this information is updated to the moment in which you are all, we are browsing the page. Browse the availability in the moment when you're browsing, so the moment when you are opening the page. So to give the the answer, I would say that uh, the availability information uh, should be checked when the page, the browsing page, is opened. Loaded. Let's, let's put it right. Okay, and then when you are browsing the page, you don't need to update it anymore. That's and it doesn't need. The... To be updated. During. housing of the page. And then we have a second question, the second half of this question, do we need to store the list of topics in the DB? Um, I would say yes, because it's more, uh, it's simpler. It's also easier for you uh, because there's no explicit requirement uh, because the database design is up to you. But it's probably simpler to have a unique source of information. This list of toppings will be used in many places, okay, in the browsing page in the order form during the validation for sending that for validating on the server side for storing the order on the server side and so on 
and so probably it's better to only have one place where all this information is stored in the database and then you can transfer that uh, to the client uh, and uh, you are sure to have always the, the list uh, aligned with the same IDs and so on. Okay, so uh, if you want, you can maintain two separate lists, but then it's your responsibility to be sure that they are kept in line. Uh, but I think the, the, the easiest way to is to make them uh, uh, just to store them in the database. Mm -hmm. um, if I want, to, can I have a list of topping inside the app, inside the client? Yes, I say, oh, so for this question that we have in the chat here, uh, you are free to, in a way, you are replicating some information on the server and on the client. Uh, this can be done. There's nothing, uh, say, uh, against that. Uh, the problem is just that you are uh, uh, you you must uh, you know, guarantee that the, the two lists, the two sets of information, are consistent. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if it's worth uh, saving a, a REST API call uh, to have this extra burden. Okay but uh, there's no specific requirement for that. Of course, uh, the list of toppings as like the list of, uh, of sizes, uh, the sizes are, are only three, okay? So maybe it makes sense to hard code uh, the application with the three sizes. Uh, if you want, you can hard code also the application also with the different toppings. Hmm? Uh, but since the toppings are, um, are many, probably it's better to make them dynamic, but it's your choice. Hmm? Um, okay, I have the, the a question, uh, let me copy from the chat so that uh, it's stored and recorded in the document. Oh, sorry, uh, can that, yeah, okay. Yes, that can be recorded. This was the answer here. And then a question from Alexandru. Uh, is it such a website with exclusive separated? It's possible to have an e-commerce style where from the available sizes page, we can send select a size at a time and that to a sort of a shopping cart or the section must be divided. Uh, so here we are not asking uh, for something, something so complex uh, as a shopping cart, uh, where you have to browse the products, uh, add to the shopping cart, and then confirm the order and so on. Here is, is simpler in this case. What is requested here is simpler because uh, it, it talks about one page. Okay, in that page uh, you compose your order. So how many pizzas of one type, uh, another type? And so it's just a list of pizzas. Each of them as a set of toppings and each of them as a quantity. And that everything is there, okay? So it's like you were directly composing your shopping cart in one page. So there is, if you want, you can have separate pages for selecting the pizzas, adding the topics, uh, toppings and so on, and then adding them to the, to the list. You can do that, but it's not required to have separate pages. Okay, at least you should have one page where the user can configure everything. If that, if you want to separate this page into different uh, uh, one where you answer the details and one where you see the the say the the, the final list, the summary list, you can do that. It will work more probably, but it can be done. So uh, the basic request, basic requirement is to have one page with the list of pizza or order pizzas that may be edited. If you want the editing selection of a new pizza, may be done on a separate page on separate 
edges. Probably more work. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, there are a couple of other follow up questions by Diego about the list uh, of the, I think, uh, in, of the toppings. Uh, um, and uh, the the answer again is depend. It depends uh, on how you design the the database. Okay, so you may have the toppings as strings, uh, or maybe it's preferable to have them as IDs, uh, and you pass only the IDs back and forth. If you have the database table, uh, if you want to pass the strings, it's always uh, a bit more fragile, and I'm a bit always uh, wary of uh, having. Uh, um, the, the, a key information encoded as a string because if you just change one character, then uh, information doesn't match anymore. Okay, but it's not. Uh, there's no specific requirement about how you how you internally represent the information. Okay. Um, okay. Marina is asking uh, this question that I'm copying right now. In the past order list, which details of the order might be shown? Or only the size or also the toppings? Let's check again about the text. Uh, no toppings are requested. OK, a row for each order. And the row shows the total number of pizza with the paid price. Then we have a detailed view. And this detail view is uh, uh, has all the, the all the details, okay? So uh, the we have a, a post a, a past order page. Only the totals, the total number. Not even the sides, okay? Just seven pizzas. It doesn't need in the in the in the table. We only have the order date, for example, and the number, and uh, uh, and the detail. Clicking to get the details uh, everything. So sizes and the toppings. And look at the suggestion that we put here in the text. Uh, the configurator can be reused. So if you if you want, you can have the same component that you uh, include in read-only mode, maybe with a parameter, say, OK, now in read-only, it just shows the information uh, with the same structure as you had in the configuration page above, where you can edit all the information. So the idea is that uh, probably if, if you are designing the component correctly just to show or to show and edit the information, you can uh, save a lot of development because you already have that component. And when you click on the detail, you just uh, insert a copy of that component. Hmm? Uh, so in the order list, technically, it's only the number of pizza. But the list can be can uh, allow opening some details, and in that case, you need to show all the all the details, all the toppings. Hmm? Uh, the availability checking method whenever new pizzas are requested. Uh, yeah, I, I I agree with Loredana with that the wording is not uh, perfect. Okay. Uh, and so I will change the text uh, to make it clear that uh, new pizza as requested means that requested uh, means uh, uh, confirming the order and not uh, necessarily when I add uh, a new pizza to the table. Okay, so that is uh, is consistent with what we said before. Checking of the available pizza should be done only when the user concludes the order. Okay, not while you are editing the form. Uh, 
this is the minimum requirement. If you want to do better, of course, you're free to do that, but it's not uh, explicit and it's not required, okay, in the text. Uh, when the user, Alexandro, uh, you create two equal pizzas, uh, should they be aggregated? Um, yes and no. If you want, uh, you can do that, but it's not explicitly required. So you can create two pizzas that are identical and they will count as one large pizza with three toppings and another large pizza with, with uh, three toppings. Um, so it's not required. But maybe done if you like. Just make it in a way that is not confusing for the user, because you see that the user is entering a pizza and it says confirm, maybe or save, and this pizza disappears because it's identical to a former one that will just increase the count. So I think the user could get confused because say, okay, I inserted something and I want to insert a new row and this row doesn't appear. And only a number somewhere will change that it's very hard to notice, okay? So if you want to make this, uh, just try to uh, make it in a very uh, easy to understand way and not, uh, and not hiding the optimization and making it difficult to, for the user to understand. Uh, the order of the topics, uh, uh, so uh, be aware of not confusing the user. And then at the order of the topping is never significant. So uh, we don't need to maintain a specific ordering. There's no meaning associated to the order of the topping. Only which toppings are you uh, adding and uh, that will condition the price, of course, and the type of pizza. Okay. Uh, the choice about yes, the off or absolutely yes. The choice how do you organize your code? How many components you make? If you want to make uh, class components uh, or functions uh, or hooks, uh, are totally. Uh, Free. That's totally up to you. Hmm? There's no. Uh, what we require just to have a list of the components uh, that just to understand. Uh, okay, in the in the documentation in the readme, to just for us to understand how you organized your your application. But then you can choose the the, the programming style that you prefer. Uh, okay, and then the other question, yeah, again, the, the answer is positive. So if you are using an external framework uh, that generates internal warning, uh, is bad for us? Uh, no, it's, uh, if you are using, uh, if the warning in this case comes from a, a recent library, that has not been updated. It's not a problem for us. Of course, if you are using a library that was last updated uh, eight years ago, then probably it's better to avoid that. Okay, but if uh, it's a library that is maintained like a, like a bootstrap uh, and. Uh, but the maintainers didn't keep up with some details uh, and uh, so they generate some warnings. Uh, we can safely ignore these warnings because the warnings are 
inside the library are not are not due to the way we are using the components that would be a problem but if the warning are generated by the library we can accept those okay Uh, the alternative could be as an alpha version with the risk of bugs. Uh, um, you you judge the risk. Okay. I would prefer probably the the stable version with some warnings. Yes, Calogero is asking a nice question because it's the only part part actually the text where the the information model becomes more complicated that the, the large pizza can have two different sets of toppings, right? And uh, do, does this information need to be stored in the database? Uh, yes, uh, because at least uh, you need it uh, to show the, the uh, or, or the past order details. And so this information, when you have issue a past order with a, a big, uh, a large pizza split in two, uh, you must, uh, um, I say, recover that information. And so it needs to be stored for it being used later. Actually, then it's up to you. You can also think uh, like there were four, four types of pizzas. Okay, small, medium, large, and two half larges, for example. And so have a different uh, way of handling this. Uh, uh, the the large uh, a large pizza with one set of toppings, or the large pizza with two separate sets of toppings. Uh, um, maybe you can consider them as two different types. But again, this is something that doesn't have a um, a clean uh, solution because it's an irregularity in the in the representation of the data. Is an exception that we have to deal with in some some way, but the information must be preserved. How you do that? Yeah, again, it's up to your design. Okay. Let's have a look again. Uh, you understand that we are only working one day, so there are no dates to consider. Okay. So we imagine that all the, let's say, uh, information number of pizzas and so on is uh, starting from zero every day. And the only information from the previous order, uh, the previous days uh, can only be shown, is only used uh, in the in the previous order page, okay? And in the previous order, you don't have the date because the dates are not handled by the system. You can only have the, the type of pizzas on or the order number or something like that. Uh, we don't deal with the dates and days and so on. The large pizza with only one set of toppings means a pizza with maximum six toppings. Uh, sorry, where is this information? Pizza price. If I post that. up to three for each of the two parts of a large one. Mm, you are right, it's not written. If you, only, if you are not splitting a large, how many toppings in general you may have? Okay, no, yes, it's some, some, this information is missing. 
so yes I, I find it reasonable to to add this number where's that here okay so the large pizza may have up to six toppings or three uh, four if not split or max three plus three if split in if is split in two okay so this information was not in the text i will add this information so actually the text will be modified concerning the explanation of the maximum number of toppings for the large and concerning the um, the uh, requirement for the updates uh, uh, so this uh, whenever word will will be, will be changed okay there are no constraints of the authentication session duration no we don't uh, just set some some time which is not too short uh, so that it doesn't expire while while we are using the system but I don't know, 30 minutes uh, or 20 or 30 minutes could be okay. But we don't need, uh, uh, we are not requesting the regeneration or re refreshing of the token or something like that. Just a, the very simple initial authentication. We, we know that it's not uh, suitable for large, long sessions, but we are not asking you to do that part here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I would uh, co um, publish this document and uh, especially uh, correct the text by highlighting also what has been changed in the second version, what has been clarified so that you can uh, redownload the text uh, just wait for probably until tomorrow and I'll, I'll write you on uh, on the slack uh, when the new um, text uh, will be available with these uh, clarifications and uh, as always uh, in the the next days if you have further questions uh, that are not covered by this uh, you can we can discuss them directly uh, on the slack group uh, on the exam uh, uh, group uh, just remember, because uh, we had, uh, we always have some, <laughs> some problems uh, uh, for the final, uh, just two details. Uh, one is remember to tag the final solution, okay, with the, uh, with the tag command. So there was somebody in the past that were, was, uh, were, commit, were committing a new commit with that with the final string in the comments of the commit, which is not what we are looking for. Okay, actually a tagging. We are, we are you have all the comments, uh, the commands here to do that tagging and submission, and also, also all the instructions that are part of, of my script uh, that I use to download and process uh, your um, 
your work so please try to to make it right so we don't have to um, to solve it case by case uh, um, every time and and the second part is that uh, you know that uh, github has, has changed in general git also has changed some default names and in particular the master branch where is that we talk about the master branch okay uh, by default uh, in the if you are creating new project uh, in um, in github uh, the, the 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 main branch uh, will be called main and not master anymore okay so in this case it should not be a problem with but because when you are cloning the project in the in the github classroom uh, you are making a copy of this project where the branch is called master okay uh, just be aware that in the new project, uh, the default name in many cases is uh, main instead of master. This was due for probably you know the story because uh, master uh, was a bad word uh, concerning the master slave and slavery and and all of, all of that stuff. Uh, okay, so uh, master is not politically correct in 2021. Uh, okay we have to live with those and uh, and so if the, the the branch is not called master but main it would, it's okay uh, it should not, not be a problem here but just be prepared and next year so you will live, see a mixtures of projects where the 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 brain the the, the, the center branch will is called master in another case it will be called main and we have a lot of confusion uh thanks to to those uh, politically correct people. Um, but anyway, uh, here we still have the instruction of the master because it's the, the template that we are we were all already using in the previous um, exams. But if you are rebuilding the project and you're using main, this is not a problem. Just tell me so that when I can when I download the project, I, I, I know the name of the of the of the primary branch where the project resides. Okay. You may have other extra branch for you branches for you if you want for development i don't care just uh, uh, in the case where the main project is not in master just tell me so that you will i will uh, check out uh, the the correct branch should if you're using the template uh, nothing bad will happen so everything will work uh, correctly okay um I don't think I have anything more to add. I think that most of you we already you know, met during the, the last exams, so you already know how it works. Unless you have some specific questions about uh, how the exam goes. Also tell me if you have any special deadlines, uh, maybe for graduations or something like that. Uh, where you need uh, uh, to have the score recorded in, in some with some deadline or time and so on. Hmm. Okay. So if if there are no additional questions, we may close this uh, this chat and. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I, I I will by tomorrow I will update the documentation so we have the final version, and you may start working towards the project. Okay, I don't see any more questions. So, thanks for being with me today, and uh, welcome back to the Polytechnico in this strange way, again and uh, see you later uh, towards the exam date. So bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>